All right, as before, we stated that uh, sound waves can interfere with other sound waves, or any wave can interfere with any wave, light, sound, uh, mechanical waves, water waves, and so on. And we know that there's, there are two forms of interference, those being constructive and destructive. And we know when a crest encounters a crest, or a trough encounters a crest, uh, a crest, we're going to, or excuse me, let me start over. When a crest encounters a crest, we'll experience constructive interference, or a trough experiences a trough, we'll also experience constructive interference. But when a crest encounters a trough, you'll get destructive interference. So I'll try and draw that quickly instead of just putting it into words. When a crest and a crest encounter each other, you get a large crest. When a trough and a trough encounter each other, you get a large trough. But when a crest and a trough, trough or trough, whatever you prefer, encounter each other, you get nothing. So again, we're going to predict the location of these constructive and destructive locations on along a line. And we'll call that a screen because this could be light. So along this line here. So what do the locations of the loud spots and the soft spots and the loud spots and the soft spot spots depend on? And how can we predict them? And this is a, it's a fascinating thing and it's quite easy. Uh, it's a very complex situation that can be explained in an easy way. I'm going to go back. I'm going to duplicate this slide so we can use it again. Uh, let's see here. Clone, clone the page. And now I have an additional. I'm going to clone this a couple times. That way we're good. And I'm going to explain to you why you get a loud spot, oh, right in the center at that location. And then it will explain why you get a loud spot here and then eventually a loud spot up at that location, the second loud spot above this initial one. I'll draw some lines. And I'm going to do these lines in relatively light colors. Just imagine there's sound that's emitted from this speaker. And that sound's propagating, it's traveling outward, 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 outward. And it travels and it eventually is going to reach that spot. It takes some time to get there because it traveled some distance in some time. Next, we're going to have another wave traveling from the other speaker. And I'm going to make this uh, a different color. So this wave is going to travel out. It's going to travel some distance in some time. If they travel the same distance and it takes the same amount of time, that means at that location we'd have a crest meeting a crest and we get a large loud spot. Next, how do we end up at this location above? Let's do this one, this loud spot. So how do we get a loud spot at this location? That's going to get a little bit busy. So instead of doing it on the top where these red lines are, I'll do it on the bottom. So first we have, so actually, you know what, I'll, I'll use this location right there. Because the symmetry, top and bottom, will be the same for the same reasons. So we have this wave traveling and again I should use a line now make that bottom one pink so we have a wave traveling from this location from the speaker to that loud spot right there not only do we have waves traveling from this bottom speaker we have waves traveling from the top speaker so I'll pick yellow and wave will travel 
from the top speaker to that location. It's difficult to see. But the distance that this, the waves travel from the top speaker are going to be longer than the distances that the waves travel in the bottom speaker. And we can determine the difference in distance by taking and drawing a line. I'm going to do this one in, oh, I don't know, black. And that line will travel from here to oh something like that there and that little bit of extra distance that's left over right there would correspond to one wavelength again that extra distance right there corresponds with one extra wavelength of wave. Let's say if you fit, oh, I don't know, it doesn't even matter, 20 wavelengths of sound waves on that yellow path, that would mean you'd fit 21 wavelengths on the pink path. I'm going to redraw this triangle here. And I'm going to extend the page on this one. So let me move it up a tiny bit so we can keep everything in the frame. So we have that distance D, which I'll draw a line, the distance between the speakers. And this is a complex, so I'm going to take my time in explaining it. So again, we have that distance D. And we have, oh, a hypotenuse, which is that black line. So we're good to go. And I'm not drawing this the same way. And then we have that pink line. which is here, and that would correspond, once again, with that little bit of extra distance, that wavelength of, in this case, sound waves that are traveling. And this angle we'll call theta. So this is a, this is a right triangle. And if I come out, it's going to get really busy. It's going to be a little bit difficult to explain. Not That color is not going to do it. I'm just taking my time to get this right for you guys. If this is the hypotenuse, and this is the angle theta, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent. So the question is, what is the relationship between the adjacent and the opposite? No, I labeled something wrong. I made a mistake. This is the adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. Made one minor mistake. What is the what or what trig function would we use to relate the hypotenuse and the opposite? And it's the sine. I'll do this in black. The sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is the opposite side, which corresponds with the wavelength, one extra wavelength, divided by the hypotenuse, d. If we solve this for lambda, the wavelength will be d sine theta, and we will experience constructive interference when these waves are off by, I'll draw this, zero wavelengths, they'd be off by one wavelength, 
down here it would be off by two wavelengths and so on three. Not only is this off by one wavelength up here because of symmetry, this is also off by one wavelength and this is off by two wavelengths. So if we go back to our slide, we can actually change this a little bit. I'll go back down. This letter M refers to how many wavelengths you're off by. Now if this value goes up, if M theta goes up, or if the number of wavelengths goes up that you're fitting into this extra space that that wave loop that wave would have been traveling, then the angle goes up. So let's go up and take a peek. So for this first order, you'd be off by zero wavelengths. You have a small angle, zero degrees. This loud spot right here, you'd be off by one wavelength. You're off by a relatively small angle. This one, you're off by two wavelengths. You're going to be off by an even greater angle. So instead of, let's say, to get to that location, if this one were... Uh, if this one were 20 wavelengths, this extra distance would be 22 wavelengths. So M is the number of wavelengths that you're off by. may not be crystal clear, but for constructive interference, the, way, the equation that you're going to apply to figure out that angle, if you want to solve for that angle, is M lambda, M being the number of wavelengths that you're off by, times the wavelength lambda, how many wavelengths will fit in that extra distance that the waves travel when they con when they construct interference in when they superimpose with constructive interference times d the distance between the two speakers times the angle theta so let's apply this uh, to different situations so there's the equation right there d sine theta equals m times lambda. So we'll go forward and we'll do the constructive one first and then come back and do the destructive. The two speakers are separated by a distance of uh, two meters and they're placed five meters from a wall. The speakers are generating sound at a uh, frequency of 1500 hertz. What is the wavelength of sound? This is an easy one, doesn't even require any information. We know that uh, based on what we just talked about we use the wave equation. Velocity is lambda times frequency Solving for wavelength, wavelength will be velocity divided by frequency. And the answer will be the velocity of sound, which is always going to be 340 meters per second, or that ballpark, or 344, 340 is going to be close enough, divided by 1,500 hertz, which are 1 over seconds. Meters per second divided by 1 over seconds will give us meters. And we end up with about 0.2 meters worth of wavelength. I understand I'm approximating a little bit, but it's going to work as far as we're concerned. The next question is, what is the distance between the central max and the first? Uh, if the listener, let's just say, detects sound. So what is the, so we'll make this a constructive interference. So uh, in that case, that extra distance, the one wave traveled, would be one wavelength. So we use the equation m is m lambda is equal to sin m or d sine theta. So we'd be off by one wavelength, and we said the wavelength before was about 0.2 meters. That will be equal to the distance between the speakers. 2 meters times the sine of the angle theta. So we're going to solve for theta. Uh, 1 times 0.2 is 0.2 divided by 2 meters will give us 0.2 divided by 2. 0.1 equals the sine of theta. And solving for theta, the Theta will be equal to the inverse sine of 0.1. Let's press pause and find a calculator to actually perform this computation. Just one second. <laughs> 